Hello YouTube, Moose Cow here. I'm a couple days late to wish everyone a happy Veterans Day. Um, so, belated happy Veterans Day. And happy Friday the 13th. Nice little combo we get. So, anyway, um, I am here with a customization video that are just unveiling a project that I have been working on for a quite, quite some time, uh, several months actually, and I have been collecting these pieces, these, yeah, as you're about to see. I've been collecting pieces from historical board gaming and uh, Shapeways, I guess, since last December. It is November now, so almost a year, almost a year project in the making. I really, really like 1914, and uh, the problems with 1914 basically are somewhat responsible for getting me to dive into customizing and getting the games um, to be the way that I would like them to be, more or less. And the biggest problem with 1914, besides it being out of print and being insanely difficult to find right now, um, if you are on that search for 1914, I wish you the best of luck. I sincerely do. I hope that they repress this or reprint it. Maybe make a second edition, but if they were just, if they just made this available again, that'd be that'd be great. But I don't know, time will tell. But anyway, on with the show. Um, many people are aware there's issues with 1914, and uh, part of that is that besides all the molds, um, besides the soldiers being the same, um, that means that all the tanks are the same. And uh, so that means everybody gets British Mark IVs. And I mean, if you like the other Axis and Allies games, you like the unique sculpts of every everything that every every nation has unique sculpts, you know. And and uh, to have every country have Mark IVs is, is a little weird. Um, it's not so much a big a deal with the other pieces and artillery is an artillery, but. With the tanks, especially for the time period, because tanks were so new and nobody knew what a tank was at the time when, you know, it start, the war started. To give everybody these is kind of weird. And I know that in the war, in the war, more, uh, Germany had a few A7V tanks, uh, 20, to be uh, 20 tops, the, and the Brits had thousands of Mark IVs, but, uh, or Mark IVs, Mark IVs, Mark IIs, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, but the, I mean, the, the the Germans more often than not did capture Mark IVs and just reuse and just reuse them against the Brits. But regardless, it, it'd be nice to have a little customization of uh, changing, you know, replace. It. I've been wanting to replace all of these Mark IVs, or at least most of them, you know, and uh, to give the country more of a unique sculpt. And as I discovered historical board gaming, they had. Uh, years ago, they had pieces that they had made through Shapeways and then had painted. Same thing with the uh, Zeppelins and stuff, but they just didn't restock them um, at some point. They just stopped carrying them. They became really difficult to find. And um, you could get some on Shapeways, but it was just asininely expensive. And uh, the, uh, the, cost, the, the, the cost is way, way too much, and the colors wouldn't necessarily quite match. Uh, not exactly, or at least not close enough, in my opinion. Anyway, these are the out-of-box pieces. Let's go on with the show. So this is the project that I undertook these last several months. And I painted all of these as they came out. This is so Historical Board Gaming had been releasing 3D pieces. I had been buying them with the intention of painting them all once they printed all of them and they were they're very slow on it the historical board gaming does great work but they're very slow on introducing their 3d pieces and, and i get it you know i get it one thing at a time they bounce all over the place that do a 1914 piece here do a 1914 piece there do the world war ii stuff etc they can only do so much at once but anyway um uh, the summer was um, rearing the end of, uh, of its approach and uh, that motivated me to finally paint these because, you know, 
you can only paint these when it's above 50 degrees and low humidity. And I'm in an apartment in Chicago. I do not have a garage that I can just paint these in. So I've had to paint these on my back porch and then let them dry in another room um, as need be. And I figured I'd make a little video just kind of going over the pieces I did that, that, that I got, the process and the paints that I used, um, if you're interested in doing this as well. And just kind of go over a few things. So first things first, I used primer. I used various, various primers, clear coat, the actual paint. I also used uh, painter's tape because a lot of these pieces was very difficult for a lot of these pieces just to stay put, especially with things like the, the like like these guys. The spray paint just blows them away, or the wind does, or whatever. So to keep them still, I would paint them on cardboard, strips of cardboard. Do one side, uh, prime one side, wait the next day, prime the other side, wait the next day, prime paint. One side, wait the next day, paint the other side. Um, if it was Rust-Oleum, I gave it a few more days, but if it was uh, Tamiya or Tamiya, however you pronounce it, um, then I would just go into and do the clear coat, clear coat one side, flip it, clear coat the other side. So we're looking at a minimum of six days as to how I did it to get these pieces painted, and I can only do so much at once. Um, um, I have a few other 3D printed, like World War II pieces, but uh, nothing of the mass I had made at the scale, and it was just such a pain to get all these things painted. Um, but I thankfully am not going to do that again uh, anytime soon because I just won't have that many. My plan is at least I will not have that many 3D printed pieces I have to make at the sa uh, paint at the same time. So from here on out, when I do this, it's just going to be a few pieces at a time. I also some people. Uh, like to you know, 3D uh, to get things to match perfectly. They would paint the normal game pieces, and I don't really want to do that. Um, I just wanted things to match because you know, the 3D printed pieces they're all a gray resin. I just wanted things to match as close as possible. When it's on the board, like you're not gonna. This is a little brighter clearly, but you're not gonna see a huge. It's not a huge difference. It's close enough. That's good enough for me. I know a lot of people um, will paint with. Um, like as if it's a tiny little, you know, one uh, seventy second, sorry, one seventy second scale model, and get really, really detailed, and that's really, really cool. Um, but I, that's not for me. I just want game pieces. I just want them to match. Again, I'm in an apartment. I can't be painting constantly. Um, I just don't have the space that I can really uh, dedicate for that. I used to make one thirty fifth scale models as a kid, so that kind of detail. Um, that kind of that was a good uh, reference uh, for me, historical reference for me uh, in terms of jumping into this. But uh, um, I've already scratched that itch of uh, detailed painting. I just want game pieces that match or at least are close. So that's the plan. Anyway, so um, I went with Tamiya because um, for most for the most part when I could because I had used Tamiya paint and Tamiya models growing up. So. For me, I was like, okay, I know Tamiya paint. I didn't know this. I hadn't worked with their spray paint before, but I had used their acrylics and I used airbrushes and stuff. I knew how the paint dried and I was familiar with it. So I just you felt, even though it was a more expensive option than going pure rust -oleum, um, I, I went with Tamiya, and so I got I had to use a couple of these. Um, I got white paint, white primer, gray primer, depending on the pieces. Um, Pieces from Shapeways are printed white generally, so I would use a gray primer just so I could tell that I had everything covered. Um, all the pieces from historical board gaming that are 3D printed, they're a gray resin, so I would use white primer with that. And I used this um, Universal Bonding Primer Rust-Oleum uh, as a base if I was going to just purely use Rust-Oleum and uh, Rust-Oleum paint. So I used these with um, a few pieces. Um, uh, but yeah, I use, yeah, I use these with like, uh, um, some of the British pieces and, um, and, uh, Italian 
trucks and stuff like that. Um, and then use the Rust-Oleum paint on top of that because um, uh, this might be uh, um, redundant information for some people, but basically there's different kinds of paints. Uh, and so these are enamels, these are um, lacquer. And you don't really want to mix the two, or at least you what you what you're supposed to do. Suppose you know, and every paint is different. You gotta want to test stuff, but supposedly what you want to do is you don't want to put lacquer over enamel. You can put enamel over lacquer, but you don't want to do lacquer over enamel. Supposedly that's what we'll, we'll call it cause uh, crazing, cracking with your pieces. And I actually didn't have that happen with me. Um, but I did have with Tamiya. I did have it happen with a few British pieces, and here's a few rejects. Rejects, and I think what had happened, as you see, so I, so I, I had these painted, and I think I just had too much, too much paint on it. And as I painted it, all of a sudden, like within once I put the, I painted it, waited a couple days, and then I put the clear coat on. And within 30 seconds, it just started crackling off. And I was like, oh no, my paint job, what happened? So some of these pieces, it's a little more obvious. These pig tank things are pretty bad. But it only happened with these. It happened with uh, a few trucks. These are some HBG trucks. And it only happened with this paint, really, for some reason. So. I don't know if you can see that. It's just kind of up top right there. So these pieces, I didn't bother finishing the underside for the clear coat. So I felt they were just screwed. Um, this aircraft carrier, which I magnetized, it only crazed on the bottom. Hopefully you can see that. It only crazed on the bottom. So, I mean, that's not too bad, but I know it's screwed up. You know. Not that bad, but yeah, it's crazed down there for some reason. Anyway, these pieces are screwed. And, uh, oh, I do want to point out, so HBG sells these Liberty trucks. I got these trucks for each of the Allied Nations originally. I really don't really care for these um, as I had painted them. Um, getting into those, that nook, getting the paint in there, that's a pain in the butt. And I'm in the Windy City, right? So one time I... I came out uh, from my drying room, my laundry room of my building, and uh, the wind blew one of these off and it fell onto the ground and it actually cracked in half. It snapped right at that, it snapped right at that weak point. So you can kind of tell I glued this one together. So this is the one that actually broke and I glued it back together and fixed it a little bit, but it has me nervous that'll happen again. So I found these shape, I'm bouncing all over the place a little bit, but. I found these Shapeways, uh, shout out to the Plastic Commando for referring these, I found these Shapeways trucks and they're, they kind of have the same issue a little bit with getting the paint in there, but not nearly as bad. And uh, they're just much sturdier and wider, they're not going to fall, they're not as like prone to falling over. Like I can see this tipping over by accident on the board way easier than I can see this one. So yeah, Plastic Commando recommended these, I like them a lot. I might redo the... Uh, the allies that I did all Liberty trucks. Anyway, backing up. So I did the primer, did the primer depending on, depending on the color, etc. Then I painted it. And then originally I used this Tamiya, because I was still doing Tamiya, I did use this flat clear. But this isn't a clear coat, as I unfortunately discovered, because pieces would still chip. So this isn't a clear coat. It does dull Tamiya flat clear. It does dull the paint because I'm not a, I'm not a gloss fan. If you're a gloss fan, that, that's fine. Then use something glossy or leave as is. But um, I'm not a huge gloss person. I don't want uh, stuff to be overly shiny in comparison to the normal game pieces. Just a little bit is fine. So I then went with this Rust-Oleum Stops Rust Matte Clear Enamel, uh, recon recommended to me by a, another member of our community, Mr. Scrubbert. He has a YouTube channel. I will link that uh, in the descriptions. Check out his stuff. In terms of uh, somebody who paints uh, very detailed game pieces, his stuff is really, really good. Um, and if that's what you're looking for, if you don't want to just have just normal game pieces, if you want um, um, 
really detailed pieces or you have questions or whatever, like feel free to give him a comment or shoot him a message or whatever. Um, but he recommended this to me and this is my second can and I just barely had enough to uh, uh, finish this, finish all these pieces here. And uh, at the very end, a couple days ago, this can actually started to explode at me on the bottom. I think I just had shaken it up too much because I was trying to get every last drop of it out. But anyway, so this is going to garbage. <laughs> get away from me. All right. All right, on with the pieces. On with the, uh, the countries. Back my light up a little bit, causing some focus issues, I think. Okay. All right, so. There we go, okay. So, first up, Austria-Hungary. Austria-Hungary. Empire that is no more. So, we got our out-of-box tank that just leapt out our item in my hand. And then we got standard truck. And I figured, in terms of the trucks, I figured that uh, the plan that I had with this was I'm not a huge fan of the tournament rules set. I feel like it's too fast, almost. So, I figured, well, and other people have done this too, but um, instead of every every unit's being able, able to move two spaces through friendly territory, let's get land transports, you know, trucks that can move like a transport, exactly like a transport, maybe a little cheaper, but they can move two unit, two infantry, or two or infantry artillery, or maybe two infantry and artillery, whatever. I haven't fine-tuned the house rule, but they can move the, that amount two spaces. And then maybe also... Um, um, uh, like bloodbath rule set, uh, the country can rail a certain amount of units only from the capital or something like that. You know, maybe they could do that. Here is the I, motor it, I think. Probably mispronouncing it terribly, but this was a Austrian Austria Hungarian tank that was in a prototype development stage. Uh, and comparison, I don't know what exactly the scale is compared to everything else. It's much smaller than the other tanks. It looks like a little ski tank kind of thing. I believe these little skis would go up and down or something. Um, but it, it never got quite past the drawing board, so to speak. But but that's your basic, like, other than the skis, it's pretty much just a, a little classic tank, you know. But it has those weird skis, I presume, to go over trenches and things. Moving on to the Russian Empire. Oh, man, what are these focus issues? Okay. Moving on to the Russian Empire. Um... Oh man, where we where have we been here? So we got out of box Mark IV, the bogus Mark IV. Once again, I got some trucks again, Liberty trucks, HBG Liberty trucks, HBG HBG Mendelev tanks. Uh, this was a tank that um, again was a drawing board idea. I don't think it was actually ever developed or even partial. I'm not even sure if they even started making this thing. But there's five of them right there. HBG came out with these a while ago. And I had been oh so patiently waiting for them to redo the Czar tank. I love this thing. This is just so ridiculous. Um, one, If you don't know much about this, this is the Czar tank. One prototype was made and failed its prototype test horribly. It got stuck in the mud, and then the war w ended, and then in the early 20s they scrapped it or whatever, but this gi utterly gigantic old-school bicycle tank. Again, nobody had any idea as to what a tank was supposed to be at this time, but this is just this is just ridiculous. Um, and I, they, they finally printed 3D printed these. I got six of them, and uh, they're, they're fucking beautiful part of my French but this is this is awesome so yeah that's two just just a, such a ludicrous design there's a gun here there's a gun here there's two turrets with four guns each and then these gigantic bicycle wheels like what were they thinking it's just insane it's like the most steampunk tank that's ever existed <laughs> anyway so that's Russia Focus, focus issues. Moving on to Germany. Germany, Germany, Germany. Again, we got our out of box Mark IV. Um, this is a German gray. Oh, yeah, backing up to the paints I used. I, apologies. This is very important. I'll just go over this right now. 
So for Austria-Hungary, I it's a little bright, but I used Park Green, TS35 Tamiya Park Green. For Russia, I used TS1 Red Brown, which I believe some people use for World War II Italy, but I thought it matched pretty, pretty well. And I'll do a little comparison real quick. So it's not that bad. It's a little darker. That's pretty good. It's pretty good, right? Um, back up to Austria-Hungary real quick, just so you can see. Like, yeah, the out of box piece is a little darker, but when it's on the board, you're not gonna mistake that for anything else. It's close enough in my book. Close enough, I'd say. To me, it has so many different greens. It was tough to pick one exactly. Now here we got we got Germany, but we have the Red Baron. And I got two of them right here just to show you a little comparison. And of course, I've magnetized mine. So this is the original one I got from Shapeways. And you can get it printed in a certain, in, uh, you know, you can get most pieces printed in different colors. So this was Shapeways' red. This is the new HBG 3D printed piece. And I painted it with Italian red, TS8 Italian red. And uh, HBG came off, came out with these really cool flight stand markers. Um, I only have a have found use for a few of them. Most of them, I think, are too too um, in the know, so to speak. You, like wait, wait, you have to be a, a total flight historical buff to know most of them, I think. But they had these cool red Baron markers just to designate, just to show up the bo on the board more often, you know, more easily. And uh, that matches pretty well in comparison to the brighter color to that marker. Let's see if I can see, if you can see a little better. Yeah, right? Right? So pretty good. I mean, there's probably other reds you can use, but I use the Italian red. It's a little bright, but the clear coat dulls it down a bit. It looks really nice, really sexy. Okay, so that's what I did for the Red Baron piece. And of course I drilled into them very, very carefully to put a magnet in there. This one is just exposed. And then this one I actually painted over. So you can't quite see it, but Yeah, you can't quite see it, but it's there. You can see the spot, but it's there. Moving on with the show. Realizing going on a little long, so I'll try to get this go through this really quick. Germany uh, for for 1914. Uh, focus, focus. TS4 German Gray. No surprise there. I went through a couple of these, as you can imagine, because I, there are just so many, so many pieces. So. We got our out-of-box Germany uh, tank, German tank. And uh, here's our trucks. As you can see, close enough. In my opinion, that is close enough. Very close. If not identical. Slight shade difference, not a big deal. If you have a problem with that, well, that's on you. Good luck finding something better. But anyway, uh, side note, I also like the Tamiya paints because they dry really quickly in comparison to uh, the um, Rust-Oleum. But that's probably because they're model paint and not uh, like home project paint. Um, I'll come back to Germany in a second, but yeah. So German Gray TS4. The French, I used TS44. That's uh, gonna focus. Brilliant blue, TS44, brilliant blue. Okay, for the Brits, I know they use these in the BBR. A lot of guys use satin green apple for the Chinese, but I'm not using any washes or anything like that to dull it down. Uh, this was the closest I could find um, that even remotely resembles the 
out of box tanks colors. And as you can see, like it's not exact. It's a little brighter. Sorry, let me focus. It's a little brighter. It's reflecting my, the lights. The light from my lights a little bit more, but if you can see that. Yeah, it's close enough, in my opinion, it's close enough. It actually looks better than the out-of-box color, but I'm not repainting the out-of-box pieces. Again, close enough. The Ottomans, this color is very, finding a color for the Ottomans is very tricky. On top of that, the Ottomans never had any tanks, so I'm just gonna stick with the out-of-box tank game pieces. If the Ottomans are able to build tanks, cool, go ahead and use them. Um, but um, I'm not gonna, unless they come up with something or I don't know, maybe armored trains, because they did have that, but I'm not going to paint any tanks for the Ottomans. Just leave the out-of-box piece as is. But I did paint some trucks. So, um, this color, it's not exact, but it's about from, according to, I talked to General Hand Grenade, this is the closest, pretty much the closest you can find. And the color is Satin Lagoon. So Rust-Oleum, Satin Lagoon. Italy also had a hard time because I wanted to try and do Tamiya for all these, of course, but um, Italy, Satin, Cinnamon, Rustoleum, Satin, Cinnamon, Painter's Touch. These are all Painter's Touch uh, paint-wise. Satin, Cinnamon. And as you can see, it's not exact. It's a little, the, the Rustoleum's a little richer, but that's close enough. That's close enough. I think it is at least. Yeah. Moving on, and I'll come back to these countries in a bit, but just I just want to get the paints out of the way. The US. Got a lot of US pieces. And um, this one I matched really well. And say, look at that. All right. This I used NATO TS61 NATO Green. This stuff is like spot on, basically. Very, really, really close. Um, this is really, really close. It's it's it beyond good enough in my opinion. I I, I like it a lot. I'm very ha I'm very happy with with this the way the the Americans turned out. Seeing that on the board, if you're, if you're up to like, I'm having tons of focus issues. I apologize. But see, or I mean, if you're standing up looking down at the board, it's gonna look exactly like all the out of box pieces. It's gonna match very well. All right, now that I'm done with the paints, I'll go over the pieces again. Continuing on from there. I realize this is probably my longest video. I'll try and wrap this up. So yeah, Shapeways trucks, A7Vs, A7V German tanks. Um, this is actually a Shapeways piece that I didn't, the, the Shapeways gray is not even close. Um, I just paint, so I got one as a test and I was like, no, this is not good. This is not good enough. So I just painted over it. This is the actual HBG piece, which has a little bit more detail. I don't know if you can make it out, but a little more detail on like the grading across the top. Um, I can't remember what these are called. Another prototype tank that was in development stages. I don't know how far it got into, into that. Here's another one. Again, it was a super heavy tank of some kind and it didn't really get past the drawing board. They might have started to assemble one. But uh, again, I like the idea of what if World War I just kept going. Unstoppable war machine. That was World War I. Meat grinder, you know. This is a Heidi. I think it's called a Heidi. It's basically just an APC. It's 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 a it's a A7V turned into an APC. That's all. Armored personal carrier. So very similar. I did one aircraft carrier. Nineteen. Oh, they were starting to develop aircraft carriers. It's also magnetized. So, I mean, it's a thing. It existed, but uh, not very much of that in World War One. So I just got one, and then. Paris gun. You can look up about this if you're not sure what this is. This is the Paris gun. Um, 
Paris thought that they were bombed by a Zeppelin the first time the Germans used these. And the Allies actually demanded them to hand them over at the end of World War I, but they did not, and they destroyed them all. Now, here's one of the other pieces I've been dying to incorporate into my games. Zeppelins. How can you not have Zeppelins in 1914? So HPG finally reprinted these and they made two different sizes and two different options. You can get them with a stand or without a stand. So I carefully magnetized the ones without a stand, drilled in little holes, put magnets. These are the smaller size Zeppelins, by the way. I thought the bigger ones were too big. They accidentally shipped me one, so I have one as a size comparison. All right, it's a little bigger. Let me put this down flat on the ground so you can see better. A little bigger. I'll put them. See? That's your size difference. And I mean, this looks cool, but this is gonna, I'm not, I don't think you need to go too much bigger than out of box 1914. And, uh, the bigger the Zeppelin, the more in the way it's going to get of other things, you know. Um, I am going to stick with these. I got the stands because I was curious in terms of placement, so I positioned them in like the same kind of spot. So I'm going to give these stands to my buddy Rick. The the four Zeppelins with stands that I did. I'm going to give these to my buddy Rick that, I've been, that you guys have been seeing me game with um, in my YouTube games. So uh, we'll be able to uh, Zeppelin each other. I've already I've already given him a uh, a red baron, so he's making he's working on his way up. Okay, all right. Let's see what else. Is that about covers Germany, France, Viola la France. So this is another comparison. I figured since there's a comparison, I can do a comparison. Um, here's the out of box tank, and then here are two tanks that HBG set, uh, had a few of these. This, these are from Shapeways, so they're painted from Shapeways, or not painted, uh, I'm not even sure what it is, it's not, it's not a paint so much, it's like a, um, resin or whatever, because if you, if you drill into these, it's white, so they, it is a paint, but it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure what to call it, but it's not, I don't feel like it's, it's like air brushed or something, I don't know, but anyway, um, Overall, I'm happy with these two, with the, the ones that I had. Again, the less painting I had to do, the better. This is close enough, in my opinion. Um, but here's what I painted with the, here's what I painted. And so uh, I just got different molds. I was fine with just keeping with these. But you can kind of see the difference. If you feel like shelling out the cash, you can get these off of Shapeways still, but um, they're quite a bit more money. Um, but again, just look at the comparison there. Okay, then. So, this was a real tank. I forget what it's called. This was a real tank, and I think they actually had some of these in World War II. Um, here's some rail. I got eight rail guns. Accidentally. I meant to order four. I accidentally ordered eight. So, I painted eight. Rail guns. Liberty trucks. I forget what these were, but these were real tanks. These were all real tanks. This is the Renault. These were all real tanks that the French used in the war. This one was very common, very small. The Renault, uh, and the US used them as well, as you'll see. I painted them for the US too. Uh, moving on, Britain. We got out of box Mark IVs, but I felt like just getting some better molds just because, hey, why not? Only two of the Libertyville trucks didn't craze on me. Or at least one didn't craze and one crazed ever so slightly. If you can see that. Yeah, just crazed a little bit at the back there, so I figured that was good enough. And then I got a bunch more trucks. Um, the rest of the Shapeways ones. You can get the Shapeways in packs of six or twelve. I got two twelve packs, so six per nation that I did those with. These are an APC, again, HPG. These are a heavy tank HBG and another heavy tank HBG. These were all in development, but not actually made. At least I think this wasn't actually, I don't think this actually saw service, but who knows. And then uh, aircraft carrier, I forget what's called. Magnetized, um, 
Again, for some reason, one crazed on me and one did not. Down the Ottomans, again, they just have that one truck. I will stick with this for this out-of-box piece for the time being. Italy has, again, Liberty trucks. And I forget what this is called. HBG has not 3D resin printed this yet. I presume that they will eventually. Uh, when they first started doing that with the A7Vs and stuff, they had some Shapeways ones that were just, you know, printed white uh, on that I was able to buy off of their store. So I got eight. And uh, But you can get those off Shapeways as well. Um, but yeah, HBG hasn't carried these since. But I did get them. They were cheaper through HPG than for Shapeways directly. So yeah, Historical Board Gaming has a um, Shapeways store page or whatever you want to call it. So I figure that they'll make resin printed stuff for all of that. Whatever they have up on that Shapeways page, I, event I figure eventually, eventually they'll make them uh, 3D printed. And that means I suspect they'll do bombers next at some point so yay more things i'll need to paint wrapping up with america um skeleton tanks oh boy i love these pieces they're this is ludicrous there's one it's a prototype tank you can go and see it on display at some in somewhere in minnesota the company that designed it has it on display in minnesota somewhere the skeleton tank uh this is a pain in the butt to paint because obviously but um, because of airbrush, you know, I'm trying to get in all the nooks and crannies, but this is so worth it. I I love this piece. It's just ludicrous. The more ludicrous the tank is, the I love it. Uh, the steam wheel tank. Again, another prototype thing. I don't know if it was ever actually made or not, or just you know, a drawing board idea, but again, just ludicrous. Exactly. My, I don't know if you heard my roommate there, but my sentiments exactly. <laughs> and then we got some more Renault tanks. We got some more Renault, <laughs> Renault tanks, and then um, I think this is the Mark 8 tank or something like that uh, that they were going to use, the Brits use as well, I guess. And that about does it. Oh, uh, bonus. I also painted some Spanish Civil War pieces because they didn't have, HBG doesn't have certain things, so I used standard yellow TS-16 for the Nationalists, Nationalist pieces and TS-37 lavender. I am fine with the colors of the out-of-box Shapeways pieces, but I needed some Nationalist tack bombers, um, Nationalist and Republican anti-AAA guns. These are just Russian guns that I painted. I got some extra ones. Um, and then they don't have um, naval units in plum, so I used the lavender and painted some Soviet transports, subs, destroyers. I figure they're either side can make capital ships. So no battleships or um, or aircraft carriers for them. But the problem is that the lavender actually I would say it looks here I need that over here. It looks better. This looks way better than the HPG plum. The uh, yellow, I would say, again, I'm getting really long here, but the yellow, in my opinion, it doesn't look as good. Oh, man. The lighting's all over the place. Focus, focus. Let's see. Here, a little bit easier with the tack armor. Focus. Okay, well, anyway, yeah. Hard to see, too much light reflecting, I think, right now. But um, in my opinion, the HPG Nationalist yellow looks better than my paint job. Of course, I'm not getting to focus. See? It's a little more matte. No, no, I'm not sure how well this is registering, but bright colors reflecting light, you know, whatever. whatever. But anyway, that's what I did. Um, there's a plum transport or a lavender transport. Yeah, it looks better than the HBG plum. Not my intention, but uh, 
I actually like it better, but I'm not repainting I'm not repainting pieces, <laughs> other the the plum pieces to be lavender. That'd be too expensive in the long run. Anyway, I just hit the 40 minute mark on this video. Apologies for any focus issues. I hope some of you found this interesting or um, informative if you are looking to paint your own game pieces. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments. Uh, feel free to reach out to, again, Mr. Scrubbert on his YouTube channel if you have game painting pieces. Again, he's the one who recommended this to me, which was very nice. This stuff is awesome. Makes your pieces really secure. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, happy belated happy Veterans Day again and happy Friday the 13th. Till next time, YouTube. Hopefully we'll get a, a game soon. But uh, till next time, always roll the dice better. Moose Cow, out.